Okay, hello everyone. It's Esteban here. Thank you very much for sending all your questions on Reddit and I'm gonna be answering them right now. Straight into it, unfortunately. Have you seen the 10 second penalty for Ocon memes? Yes, I've seen it uh, in my desperation. Yeah, obviously comes from a not so great moment. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously, you know, something that you guys have created and it's actually quite funny if you think about it. So yeah, I don't take it too badly. Salve Esteban, as you famously come from a modest family, more than most of the grid, how would you suggest we make racing more accessible for kids of all kinds of social and economic backgrounds? There is one way um, which have become uh, a very good way of learning how to drive nowadays and that is, you know, sim racing. That's definitely the best way to, to start into racing if you don't have racing background or if you're not able, um, you know, to go on a, on a real karting track. Like, for example, Jan Madenbra is a good example. Um, but a lot of other uh, have come from, uh, from sim racing where, you know, there is a, a very high level uh, out there. What's the most unusual thought you've had during the middle of a race? <laughs> oh no, I forgot to call my mom, etc. Thinking about something else, um, you need to quickly, you know, get back into it. Um, I got a, a good story to tell when I was in a, in go-kart in, in, you know, a, a, a little race back then. I was thinking about uh, the last lap and the celebration and, you know, I made a mistake in one corner, I almost went off. So, uh, yeah, that uh, has proved me that you can't do that. If you could make any other race on the calendar a night race, which one would you pick? I think Monaco, I already thought about that and I think Monaco would be um, an excellent race to be doing. So, I think it has to be a street circuit, you know, to, to be dark. I know we have, you know, some normal races on, on, the, on night as well, but um, yeah, a street circuit like Monaco in the dark would be quite, quite something. Hi Esteban, is there any driver you feel is underrated and should be given more respect? You know, if you're in Formula 1, it means that you deserve, um, you know, your seat. No driver should be um, underrated and all the drivers should, should have, you know, a lot of respect from everyone because, uh, you know, we're risking our lives every weekend uh, going around these walls and, you know, racing uh, at very high speed around the streets at times and you know it's um, all to put on a good show and and I hope that you guys um, you know respect every driver. The night before the race in quali do you think about the race get tense or have a specific routine to keep your head in the game? Just before sleeping you know I try and visualize uh, what I should do for for the following day and you know that way um, you normally have it engraved in your mind and you are ready to uh, to uh, make it happen on the track the following day. Hey Esteban, some drivers are associated with animals, like Max with lions, Daniel with the honey badger. What animal would you choose as a mascot? Good luck for the rest of the season, thank you. Not sure how you call it in English. Um, you know, it's, it's not a tiger, but it's the, the tiger that is very lean and that runs very fast. Cheetah, exactly. Well, I think because I'm very lean, um, and I hope fast as well, <laughs> um, I could be called like that. If you could add one race to the calendar, where would it be and why? Well, the French Grand Prix, um, in my dreams, that would be Centre Paris. I think, you know, going around the Arc de Triomphe or close to the Eiffel Tower, that would be, yeah, something, uh, something awesome. And uh, yeah, never say never. And I hope uh, that one day this will happen. In Canadian GP 2022, when you were cycling in the pit lane during the pit lane walk on Thursday, I was pushed by the crowd behind me and I leaned on you while you were cycling, which almost caused you to fall. <laughs> I just wanted to apologize for it since I didn't intend to purposely make you fall. <laughs> it's all good. Don't worry, don't need to apologize. Nothing happened. Thank you for apologizing, but don't worry. It can be very crowded. Um, and yeah, I'm rushing from left to right all the time, so. Um, nothing, no drama, so all good, thank you. Hi Esteban, another Esteban talking to you here. How do you feel about your name now and growing up? When I was little, I remember not liking my name because it sounded like it belonged to an older person. Oh, now I think it's a kind of a unique name. Good luck in the rest of the season and future ones. Now I think um, you have to be proud of um, the name that uh, your, your parents has, has given you and uh, it doesn't sound like, a, like an old person name. So you're all good. <laughs> Hi Esteban, what was your favorite moment during last Saturday's GP Explorer? Love seeing you and Pia interacting so much with the people and appreciating the atmosphere. 
and that, that was crazy. I mean, what you guys made us live there will be forever uh, engraved in, in our minds. Um, it will never, never leave. So yeah, it was, it was insane. I was very blessed to be able to, to drive and, and show, you know, what a Formula One car is, is also possible, um, you know, to do. Yeah, that was, that was crazy. So thank you very much. Merci. What's your opinion on expanding the grid and having another team in the mix? I would definitely welcome, um, you know, another team, another brand uh, joining Formula One. You know, that, that just gives a little bit more options to uh, drivers that would love to uh, get to Formula One. Yeah, I'm just thinking as an opportunity point of view for all the young ones, you know, that are knocking on the door. What's your favorite song right now and of all time? Depends of the mood. Um, I would say I'm probably more into French rap uh, at the moment. You know, it has to click, but it changes, you know, through, through time and with the mood, you know, that you have. Or if I go to Asia, I will listen to something a little bit different. And if I go to Europe, you know, it's... But I have my times where I'm more of a, of a US rap uh, listener and, yeah, some electro music as well. So those are really the three kinds I would listen, um, but it really depends and, and, uh, and variates. But, uh, yeah, um, French rap at the moment is, is probably the thing I'm listening to. Out of all your teammates over the years, who do you feel like you learned the most from and what was your biggest takeaway from them? Um, and I've always had, you know, strong teammates, you know, from Pascal Verlein to Sergio to Danny Rick to Fernando to Pierre. It's, it's interesting, you know, to comparing yourself, see the, the strong points from some, seeing the weak points uh, as well. And interesting to see, you know, how some works uh, in a way, because uh, there is always things that if you don't watch, you're an idiot because, you know, you need to, to take the best and, uh, and take it for you and, and carry it uh, as well through your career. So you always learn things from, from anyone and I would not say I've learned something more from, from one driver to another. Is there any disadvantages to being so tall in F1? Yes, there is. It's been the case always. I've been very tall. I grew up, um, I think, 14 centimeters in one year um, when I was 14, something like that. Yes, not, not a great thing to be tall in F1, but uh, nowadays I'm lucky enough to uh, have a car that is, uh, that is big, um, you know, for me, very long. Um, and FIA have worked on every car, um, you know, for me as a reference, as I'm the tallest, um, for everyone to have good space uh, in cars. Your favorite race of your career and why? Formula One or otherwise? Good luck for the rest of the season. Also hi from all the marshals. Well, first of all, thank you very much because uh, if you are a marshal, um, obviously without you, um, you know, we would not be racing uh, so safe. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for, for your efforts and everything that, that you do. Yes, my favorite race of my career has to be obviously Budapest, uh, my win. Otherwise, I would say in Formula 3, um, you know, there was a race where I, I won, um, you know, all uh, the pole position and, and I won all the races. There's three races in the weekend at the time and that was in, uh, in Moscow uh, back then. Um, and it was important uh, as a fight to Max uh, back then uh, that uh, I was able to, to achieve that and, and we did achieve that. So that's probably also my number two um, best race of my career. What part of the team are the most underrated that you think deserves more appreciation? I think you guys don't realize, you know, how much work goes into uh, everything in Formula One. People don't count hours, you know, it's 24-7, it's uh, you know, for some departments. Um, but for the others, they are also traveling very far away from their family for most of the year. And I think, you know, all the jobs in Formula One, all the people that are so passionate, they, they deserve credit um, because it is, you know, the top, um, the top people, obviously, that, that are the most talented in every department. Doesn't matter what department it is, it, it will always be the top, because we are competing against the top of somebody else, uh, the top department of some, some other teams. So, uh, yeah, everybody is, is pushing for greatness. And honestly, um, when I was young um, and thinking about, you know, driving a Formula One car and racing a Formula One car, um, I was not realizing, you know, how many uh, people were behind the scenes and, yeah, as I said, it deserves uh, much more credit than, uh, than it's given to. 
What's your favorite snack, Esteban? You know, as you can see, I'm very lean, um, so I need to constantly keep eating to keep my weight up because, you know, I'm losing quite a lot of weight when I race. All sorts of like sugary snacks, putting in a blender, uh, you know, mixed all the way, which um, is like, I don't know, a thousand calories or something. It's, it's very, very thick. So uh, that's what I have uh, every day. It's mixed with cookies, protein, um, probably creatine as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't even ask my physio because uh, it feels like I would throw up, you know, if I was uh, realizing how much ingredients there would be in there. But, um, you know, it's, it's nice when you have one. It's not nice when you have two a day and it's every day. F1 drivers are known not to be a huge fan of PI events and obligations. Are there any PI events that you actually enjoy? And if so, which is your favorite? Um, you know, we are very much focused on uh, trying to get the car to the, the quickest that it can and, um, and obviously we have these obligations that are coming on the side so we try and, and squeeze it as quickly as we can to go back to work. So, um, you know, it can be seen more as a, I don't want to do it, but it's actually not that. It's just that it's, it's probably in the middle of something which is important, which is related to, to the performance of the car, but something that, you know, is part of the job uh, nowadays. Um, obviously we are racing, that's our main focus. Um, but there is uh, a lot of things that comes on the side uh, as a racing driver and as a Formula One driver and it's, uh, um, it's obviously something that you know, we can't complain about and that I'm very happy to do. All right guys, that's a wrap. Um, thank you very much for sending all your questions. I hope you liked um, the answers. Uh, this weekend obviously we are in Singapore and I hope that uh, you are going to be able to, to follow us and, and cheer for us. And uh, I see you hopefully around the track very soon. Ciao.